Ayan po. So, our topic for this morning is Team Planning of God Programs, Projects, and Activities. You can see here that uh, there are different terms which are all interrelated. The first term is Planning. Of course, the next one is God Programs, Projects, and Activities. So, all of these are interrelated which are focusing on human development. But before that, uh, let me share to you the outline of this lecture. The first one is the definition of planning. The second one is God for development. The third one is programs, projects, and activities for God and God plan in the school level. So let's start with the word planning. According to Brotman 2019, planning highlights our capacity to settle on future courses of action in ways that philosophy shape ongoing thought and action. So this one is uh, a deeper meaning of planning, which is embedded by the word philosophy. I know all of you are familiar with the different philosophies. So we have naturalism, realism, pragmatism, and all of these things are always giving us assumptions on the things that we are doing. Let's say, for example, naturalism. We all know that all persons are naturally good, and that is an assumption. And all of us would like to have equity and equality in our life. So why plan? When we plan, we would like to settle our actions on future courses of action. Gusto nating magkaroon ng development. Gusto nating may mabago sa ating buhay, sa buhay natin o sa buhay ng iba. So therefore, we need to plan. And on the school level, if we will be planning, always take note that it should be a team. Prior to this talk, I've, uh, I, I had a dialogue with our SBM coordinator and talked to her and told her that prior to making and crafting all the artifacts for SBM for this school year, I have told her that we should have first a planning meeting. And when we say planning, we have to talk together, we have to plan together, and work together. Kaya nga sabi, pag nagpa-plano tayo, dapat magkakasama tayo mula umpisa hanggang sa tagumpay natin. So let us think of that. Kaya hindi pwede na we will be making an action or a goal or a target or an outcome na tayo lang yung gumawa. Mahirap yun kasi hindi natin masasabi na we plan effectively. So, always remember that it is always guided by our philosophy. Next, why plan for God? So, di ba meron tayong SDG or the Sustainable Development Goals? And the first one is, which is related to gender equality, is goal number five, which is to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. So, I have a story to tell. Meron mga bansa sa Africa na ang ginagawa dun sa mga babae, minumutilate, tinatanggal yung kanilang clitoris. Why? Because these women should be deprived of sexual satisfaction. So, imagine that's, that's very depriving for the natural philosophy. We can say that we humans should, of course, enjoy sexual acts as for married men and women. And for all other culture, they have their own terms in, ter in terms of uh, enjoying sexual acts. So, di ba? Parang napaka-unfair yung ganong ginagawa. So, therefore, we should uh, achieve goal number five, which is equality and empowering women and girls. So going deeper, according to Summer and Thrive, 
2008, there are three views of development. The first one is, let's go to, to the lower circle. Development as a dominant discourse of Western modernity. So if we will be going back to the history, we can say that modernization is always benchmarking, is always benchmark on Western modernity. And we would like to have this before, huh? we, have, we would like to have this Caucasian look. We, we would like to go to America to, to follow them, to what they are doing, to enjoy products that they have produced. And this is part of Western modernity. So for them, it is a dominant discourse on Western modernity. So one example is the Churi of Rosto. If you are familiar with Rosto, he is always saying that modernization always starts from copying, which is from the Western world. So that is the first one. And now, uh, looking looking at, at the present, parang hindi hindi na hindi na Western yung ginagawang ano yung ginagawang uh, benchmark nagigina ng mga Korean, Japanese, and uh, if we will be looking on the development side, the, the pendulum now is going from left to right. Next, development development is a short to medium term outcome of desirable targets. So this is always related to to our um, what we say planning on a short term basis. So just like uh, we would like to achieve this uh, MPS for this quarter, we would like to increase the number of numerates. We would like to increase the the number of readers. So that those are what we call short to medium term outcomes of desirable targets and it can go higher into improving the the MPS of the entire school or uh, shifting from SBM level 2 to SB, SBM level 3 so this is a short to medium term outcome of desirable targets and the last one is development as a long-term process of structural societal transformation. So if you are familiar with Amartya Sen, so Amartya Sen is a philosopher who always advocate that we should have freedom and to have freedom is to practice human development. So it is a long-term process of structural societal transformation that is according to summer and tribe so if you will be thinking of developing a god program a god activity for our school maybe we can think of a short-term goal to empower women in our school to empower the students in our school through different activities but Always remember that there is a long-term goal which is for structural societal transformation and of course that is to empower every woman, to empower uh, the gender awareness and development in the school and make it a culture. This one is another point on human development. So it is said that development in terms of the richness of human life it is focused on creating fair, fair opportunities and choices for all people. So let's go back. Karina, we have defined planning and our topic for, for today is about planning for God related programs, projects, and activities. So always remember that if we would like to plan, we should always consider human development or simply development. So by the way, when we say development, there are three things that are that are always embedded. The first one is the term Kaizen. Are you familiar with the word Kaizen? So when we say development, it should always be Kaizen. That's a Japanese term which means continuous improvement. So remember the term Kaizen. Okay, continuous improvement. 
The second one, when we say development or human development, is that it is utilitarian. So, it can be utilized. It can help people improve their lives. Okay, so, Kaizen, it is utilitarian. And the last one is, it is multidisciplinary. So, when we say, oh, what is development? So, development is Kaizen, it is continuous improvement. Kaizen is utilitarian because it is very useful and it should be used. Naalala ko pati si, si Sin Chabiliar. Sabi ni Sin Chabiliar, uh, yung mga ano, yung mga taga ano daw, mga taga UP, uh, research ng research, pero wala namang nangyayari. And if we, if we would like to, if we will reflect, if we would reflect on what she is saying, that's true. What they are doing is not utilitarian because many researches were put into shelves. So, and of course, the, the last one which I am saying is that it should be multidisciplinary. We should not only look on the education side as per discipline of teaching. We should also look on the economic side. So, sabihin natin, ah, may mga bata tayo na na hindi nakakapag-submit ng module, may mga bata tayo na nakahuli ng pag-submit, but why why dig deeper? Let us see, an ano ba ang kalagayan nila? Meron ba silang internet? Meron ba silang gadget to Google? Or the social aspect? Yung bang mga magulang nila? Educated? or nakakaintindi man lang ng English language that when you ask them questions like what is adjective, what is noun, pronoun and eh what if the topics were higher, may chemistry, may physics so all of our students or many of our students and we, we can't deny the fact that they are really in a very difficult situation so take note of that that's when we say human development. So it will be easy for you to remember. That's Kaizen, that it is utilitarian, and it is multidisciplinary. And let's go into the dimensions of human development. So there are two factors. The first one is directly enhancing human abilities. And the second one is creating conditions for human development. Itong directly enhancing human abilities or three. Number one is long and healthy life. The next one is knowledge. The third one is decent standard of living. So, let's try to imagine that you will be teaching students wherein even looking for food or even finding food on the table is very difficult for them. Or simply, when they, when they got sick, they lack the money to, to buy the medicine or to take care of themselves. So, these are things to, to be considered. Next, knowledge. As I have mentioned, di ba, yung social aspect na pinag-uusapan natin. So, try to, to consider what is the, the status, what, what is the educational status of the parents or the guardian or the people within the community. So it's very important that these things will enhance the human ability. And of course, decent standard of living. So I admire those students na nagsasagot ng module, uh, nagagawa ng mga project, kahit sa ilalim ng uh, yung mga poste ng ilaw, because they, they don't have any electrical connections at home. Di ba? But... Let, let's try to, to imagine that doing that thing is, of course, putting them into jeopardy, di ba? Nasa ilalim ng, ano, ng poste, Madil, madilim naman yung paligid. So what, what if that is your daughter or someone's daughter? Of course, he or she, pati he ha, or she, can be prone to sexual abuse. Diba? So, these are, these are things that we should reflect on. Next, 
creating conditions for human development. The first one is participation in political and community life. Well, in the Philippines, we are we are enjoying so much the the political participation that uh, we can we can speak of our political biases and that community life is very vibrant, di ba? So, kaya nga nauso, di ba, si Marites? Di ba? Kilala nyo ba si Marites? Yan. Na laging binabanggit ni Meses. So, these are, these are things which create conditions for, for human development. And of course, sometimes, not create good conditions for human development, but may affect human development. Okay? And take note po ha, ang mga teachers, ang mga government employees should uh, should be aware of uh, showing political biases, specifically election period. Yan. That's a reminder. Next is environmental sustainability. Alam nyo ba, merong study sa, sa India na ang ginawa ng World Bank is to to help the women provide water system, provide water system for for every household. Alam nyo, hindi hindi ano, hindi hindi nag prosper yung project. Why? Kasi yung mga babae pala sa sa India, pag sila ay kumukuha ng tubig sa balon, doon sila nagkikita-kita, doon sila nagkakausap-usap, doon sila nagbabanding. Doon sila nag-share share ng kanilang mga experiences. And of course, they don't want to, to just stay at home. But but simply, di ba? Dapat pipihiti na lang yung gripo, may tubig na. But, but still, they would like to go outside, socialize. And we can say that sometimes, uh, there there are various reasons for, for socialization. Okay? Next, human security and rights. Yan, di ba? Ang, uh, ang mga tao ay gusto laging secured. Siyempre, number one, yung household natin, dapat safe. Tapos, yung mga rights natin, yung mga uh, rights on, on our privacy, on rights uh, sa ating mga online communication, we, we would like always to have these rights and enjoy these rights. And take note, the last one is gender equality so part the dimensions of human development is gender equality although it is uh, specified on the last part but it is part of creating condition for human development so we have connected already that we should plan and for creating human development for to prosper we should consider development on the on its three aspects which i have discussed at the same time it is part of creating conditions for human development so let's proceed now to development practice diba so so sige nga i ano na natin i apply na natin on on what area okay so when we say development practice, it should bring change or improvement into economic growth and e equity. Okay? Gone were the days na yung mga lalaki, that we are very patriarchal, yung mga lalaki lang ang nagtatrabaho at yung mga babae ay nasa bahay. It's different now. Diba? Minsan nga, nababaligtad pa ang sitwasyon. Yung lalaki, siya yung nasa bahay. Yung babae, siya yung nag-work. So, it depends upon the arrangement of husband and wife. Okay? And uh, I've worked in uh, the industry from 1995 to 2000. I've been uh, part of Mitsubishi Motors. And during that time, I was amazed that even on the manufacturing sector, in a production line, you can see in the production line that there are men and women and that they are co-equal and that what men can do women can also do so 
that 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 is very uh very uh, ga- that is a game changer that even test that di ba ano ang mga mga courses na inyo offer ng test that they're offering welding and fabrication but you can see women studying welding and fabrication so i have i have done a research uh, entitled uh, matching the knowledge skills and attitudes of the industry that's that that is my dissertation when i studied at uh, slsu and uh, i found out that in terms of skills the company would like more women bakit daw kasi ang sabi ng mga nasa industry women are more meticulous and they are always looking for quality while men tend to produce products that are sometimes haphazard diba? so that's on the point of view of the industry so that is economic so social i have mentioned that that uh, we should have access to health education housing and employment and it should be equal for both men and women political cultural and of course the environment Diba nakakatuwa na ang mga advocates for for taking care of the environment are mostly women, di ba? Si Lauren Ligarda, yan, she's, she's, an, she's an environmentalist and uh, all other women who's working to to save our environment. So if we will be considering these things in this area, there should be a balance between both gender. And I have discussed planning. I have also discussed development, specifically human development, their personal aspects in terms of uh, bringing it to the community. So let's go to DepEd. So it is stipulated in DepEd Order Number no. Thirty Two, Series of Twenty Seventeen. And it is working for gender responsive basic education policy. And of course, as uh, educators, as school administrators, as future school leaders, we should always think that we are guided by these policies that we should follow. Are you familiar with this DEPED order? The legal basis, of course, is the 1987 Philippine Constitution or the Republic Act 9710 or the Magna Carta of Women. It is also stipulated in Republic Act 10533 or the Enhanced Basic Education of 2013 that DepEd should follow this gender responsive basic education policy. Okay? And take note for number three. This policy is consistent with DepEd's vision, mission, values, and mandate. So I I will not recite the mission, vision, values, and its uh, core values because this is uh, uh, very familiar to us. Next, it is always saying that. Education should be accessible to all. Uh, naalala ko pa nung uh, malit pa ako. I- I'm always asking, bakit bakit kalimitan sa sa mga kaibigan ko yung mga tatay nila sila yung nagtatrabaho at bakit sila yung mga professional? Sabi nung nanay ko, kasi nung unang panahon, kalimitan, pag babae, sasabihin sa'yo, when you come to age, mag-asawa ka na. Uh, tapos, huwag ka nang mag kasi yung asawa mo, siya ang bubuhay sa'yo. Parang, that, that's a, a, a common common thing during those days. Na it's, it's very, it's very minimal that you can see that women are working and they have finished their education and that they are 
empowered. Although may mga may mga of course we have uh, uh, of course professional during our time that, that I have observed, but many many of them, many families which I have met, usually yung mga lalaki sila yung mga nakatapos ng college sila yung engineer and that they are working hard for their family. Okay? But, iba na, iba na siyempre ngayon. So, this is uh, the PPAs for God. And this is Programs, Projects, Activities for God. Okay, so this is uh, the first one. The first one is, it should be integrated in the school improvement plan and annual implementation plan. So when we say, oh, this, this one is uh, our God training and this is integrated in our school improvement plan and we have this annual implementation plan and we have allotted budget which is 5% of the annual MOOE of the school. Why not always put their training or, or God activity or God cum team building activity. So there are many activity that we can include for God. So next. So school calendar should be aligned with Women's Month. So on the month of March, Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Pride Month on June. Breastfeeding Month, August. Peace Education Month, September. Children's Month, November. 18-day campaign to end violence against women, November 25 to December 12. So therefore, uh, this, this one's near. So we have to, to celebrate an 18-day campaign to end violence against women. And Human Rights Month on December. So looking at this celebration, sometimes we, we, we need not to, to do a training or related activities, but, but we, can, we can think of integrating this within the curriculum or creating activities or fun activities. Okay, di ba? Pwede kayong magpa, magpa quiz be and di ba? Hindi naman, hindi naman siya magastos, di ba? Hindi, hindi naman siya ganun, ganun ka, kalaki ang, ang effort na, na dapat gawin, di ba? So, yan. Uh, so, breastfeeding month, di ba? Pwedeng, pwedeng magkaroon ng mga information dissemination. So, come to think of what impact you can do if you will follow this schedule on a monthly basis. And again, what I'm saying is, this is always anchored on human development. Okay? Diba? Yung mga dimensions ng human development, which is number one, is income. Income growth. Yan. Isang dimension yan na that uh, women will be empowered that uh, through breastfeeding, through regular breastfeeding, ma-augment, di ba, yung, yung gastos na pa, para sa pamilya. It, she, the mother, will do breastfeeding to his, to her child. Di ba? So, nakakatulong. May mga, may mga impact yung mga gagawin natin. Okay? Ito, itong ano, uh, uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender LGBT pride man. Ito, ito, ito pwede rin itong isang aspect which is to, to reduce inequality. Diba? So, this, this one is also striking that aspect. Next, okay, uh, what I have discussed is for learner's development. Okay. Next is curriculum standards. So, enhance and promote a K-12 curriculum that integrates gender equality, human rights, sexuality, and reproductive health education, peace education, environmental studies, and child protection. So, it should be embedded in the curriculum. So, when, when we say it, it is the curriculum, it is, it is the heart 
It is the heart and center of our education. It's, it's the curriculum, di ba? You know, in in Japan, if you will be if you will be looking closely into the curriculum of Japan, what is really integrated is the love for country. Okay, it's always the love for country, and Japanese people are willing to die for their country, and we can say that it is embedded within the curriculum. It is part of their hidden curriculum. But time to think. In our country, it is always said that makadios, makatao, di ba? Makabansa, makakalikasan. It's always said, but can we see how it is integrated as a hidden curriculum that we should love our country, di ba? And that we should fight for human rights. Next, develop a set of God and human rights competencies including but not limited to core messages and key concepts such as responsible parenthood. Yan, mga ganyan. So, if you will look closely into the learning materials that that we are using, and we would like to to study these materials, sinasabi ba dito na ang mga magulang ay maging responsible and that there should be equal opportunity for for everyone yan di ba kaya nga ngayon uh, dapat mag-iingat kasi um, di ba ang ang libro sinasabi ang pamilya ay binubuo ng tatay, nanay, anak, at minsan ganito pa eh may kuya, may ate, may bunso di ba paano kung kung solong anak di ba Parang, oh, well, our family is not ideal. Or, papaano kung wala ang nanay? O wala ang tatay? I have only my mother with me. So, we are not family. Di ba? So, be careful with, with those things. And that when we discuss, when we share materials, we should explain this to to our learners. That, well, you are still family. Because you have someone to lean on, to be with you. You have your lolo and lola. Okay. Next. Ensure minimum standards on gender sensitivity that will be integrated on trainings, curricular, co-curricular, extracurricular programs for learners and trainees. So ito mal malimit na uh, nakakaroon ng ano, you know, I'm I'm a member of the fact finding investigation team of DepEd Quezon and usually we have cases involving uh, sexual abuses of those coaches yan minsan band leaders and teachers to students so basically teachers to students can be a male or a female and why why do we have these cases why is it happening why is it piling up it's because it is not insured, okay? And that uh, there is no check and balance within the system. But if prior to, to conducting the activity, students will be reminded of these things that you should talk whenever uh, things got wrong. And if you feel uncomfortable for any activities which which is done to you. You can talk and you can report. Paulit-ulit na nangyayari. Kaya lang nalalaman kasi mayroong kaklaseng magsasabi. But the damage was done. Okay? And as per curriculum standards, you should always integrate this. You know, uh, our curriculum is said to be spiral, spiral. But uh, Usually, the, the context of saying that it is a spiral is that it is from the most basic to, to the difficult, to, to the highest level or to the higher level of learning. But take note that when we say a curriculum is, is a spiral in approach, we should say that this one is 
related to science. This one is related to social studies. All aspects or the topics were interrelated and it is considered as one. One example. So if you will be teaching uh, the students um, how to how to uh, how to clean their body. So this is a basic. This is more on hygiene. Right? So this this is a topic on health. We can we can discuss that and integrate that in our in our science subject by discussing the parts of the body or let's say the reproductive system and that we should take care of our reproductive system it should always be clean to avoid sickness o oh, di ba so punta naman tayo sa sa social studies okay how to clean your body di ba so this one is related to socialization and that we should say that when you go out you should be clean you should clean your body because it is respect for 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 the people outside di ba Science, health, social studies. How about math? Paano, paano mo siya? I-relate sa math. Okay? So, you can say that uh, percentage. Okay? The percentage, you can do a research. Uh, ito yung percentage ng uh, mga tao na nagme-maintain ng proper hygiene. Okay? So, they, they don't get sick. But if you don't practice proper hygiene on this percentage, you will get sick. Di ba? So, there are chances of getting sick. So, science, math, and English, of course, English, you can you can ask the students to, to create an essay, okay, or tell an experience on how they, they take care of their body, or experiences, or in, uh, they, they encountered uh, uh, challenges in terms of uh, taking care of their body as well. So th these are interrelated, and we can do that if there is a cohesion within the teachers. Oh, mare, ano nang topic mo? Ah, sige, pwede ko palang integrate ngayon yan. Pwede ko pala, pwede ko pala siyang isangat, di ba? Especially kung may face-to-face -face classes, di ba? So it's it's good to to put this in in our curriculum standards, and uh, we can we can do localization. We can do indigenization, diba? contextualization, so more of those things. Let's proceed now to learning delivery. In terms of learning de delivery, okay, uh, this is for uh, for all public, private schools, learning centers, including uh, state universities and colleges, local colleges and universities shall maintain gender responsive instructional delivery and services sabihin nila uh, di ba deped order yan why why is it that uh, uh, colleges and universities were included di ba uh, malimit meron tayong mga ano may mga student teachers yan kaya kaya isinama sila diyan because they as for their practicum as for their observation they are part of the system Diba? May partnership yung DepEd uh, dun sa mga, sa mga school. Diba? And there are also laboratory schools such as yung SLSU is a laboratory school. So, should practice gender responsive instructional delivery and services. Next. It's, it's almost related with number one which is to design a gender responsive models of instruction for basic education appropriate for all types of learners. So when we say gender responsive models of instruction, di ba? So in instruction sa sa pag sa pagtuturo na ito on how, on how you you conduct your teaching. So di ba? Kalimitan. Oh, uh, Jose. Oh, Rico. Oh, ba? Parang ano ah, parang tinawag na lahat yung mga lalaki, yung yung mga babae hindi tinawag. So if you are a a women and you are on that class teka parang si sir hindi 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 kami tinatawag that that's part that that's part of learning delivery di ba o kaya sa GC oh kayong mga babae sige kayo na lang ang tuturuan ko kasi yung mga yung mga lalaki hindi naman sila nagiintindi well that's gender responsive 
that that is not gender responsive and that's not a good model of instruction di ba so mamaya may mga discussion pa, pa tayo dito in terms of pitting these students mamaya meron pa sa sports and all others next ayan uh, assessment models for basic education assessment naman di ba so kalimitan uh, Di ba, mga estudyante yung mga lalaki, minsan makukulit. O sige, uh, may games tayo. O yung mga, mga babae na lang ano, ang kasali dito sa games na to. No? Di ba? So, kaya kalimitan, if you will be doing group activities, kalimitan ngayon, it should be mixed. May lalaki, may babae, o hindi pwedeng yan. Puro lalaki, pwede, puro babae. It should be a mix and it should be a, a good approach for a gender responsive innovative teaching and learning. Okay? Next. So I I I hope uh, I I'm I'm sharing this experiences and uh, information with you and as I discuss along you can you can think of how you will integrate uh, your teaching process especially in this time of pandemic that it is now done on a uh, modular approach. So, paano ko kaya ito gagawin? Paano ko kaya may integrate? Di ba? Next, provide technical assistance to field offices. Well, this is this is part of uh, the top management uh, in conducting technical assistance. So, in our division office, I think we have Ma'am Michelle Duma to, to assist schools for responsive and gender uh, gender responsive learning models and strategies and other god activities so di ba hindi hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na ah, alam alam ko lahat kaya kong gawin no uh, sometimes we need to to ask for technical assistance sometimes we need to to look for people who will help us or experts to help us kaya nga ano kaya nga yung mga mga god uh, training and activities I, I i'm i'm really i'm really um uh, choosy pagdating sa sa ganito kasi uh, may magsasabi sir pwede bang i-discuss mo yung ano magna carta for for women and uh, if i i i know someone or somebody who's an expert who's who's a graduate of law or have been uh, tasked as uh, or commissioned as uh, an authority for women prote women's protection or has sat on women's protection desk maybe he he or she can be the better person to talk and uh, when mom judith asked me for for this one well sabi ko i i can do that because uh, uh ppas and uh, doing ppas and planning is part of my craft okay it's part of my uh, my work as, as a school head okay so the fourth one is of course we, we can ask for technical assistance from higher offices so the next one is learning environment you know uh, it is difficult to say that we are maintaining a, a learning environment that is conducive for students because the the students home the students house the students residence is their learning environment okay so there should be zero tolerance for forms of discrimination violence and abuse mm -hmm. baka meron pala kayong estudyante na kaya hindi nagsasagot ng module it's because uh, he or she received verbal abuse from the parents bakit Itong estudyante na to, 6th week na, hindi pa nagsasubmit ng module, wala pang sinasubmit. Pero during the face-to-face -face classes, he or she is very active. But ngayon na uh, nag uh, nagkaroon na ng modular approach, hindi na nakakapag-submit. So try try to check on, on our students and talking to them for for a while or just saying hello, hi, kumusta kayo is a good thing to ensure that what we are doing is gender responsive. Okay? So, sayang kasi uh, lalo ngayon na kailangan ng education to to help people improve their lives. So, next one. 
So, ensure that DepEd personnel are properly oriented and trained. Yan. So, what we are doing now, the God training is part of orientation. It's part of training uh, personnel. And we should be aware that there are laws, there are policies to follow as DepEd personnel, as a DepEd teacher, as a DepEd employee. Okay. Next, uh, ensure that development and capacity building through in-service training and in coordination with NEAP and private institutions is aligned with the gender rights-based education. So, minsan may mga pa-training ang NEAP, minsan may pa-training ang division office, or sometimes there are online training that we need, we need to attend and we need to learn because it's through learning that we can adapt. It's through learning that we come to realize things. It's through learning and education that will enlighten us. Okay? So, take note of that. It's development and capacity building. Sabihin natin, nakaboring naman, nakaupo na naman, nakikinig na naman dito sa speaker na boring. So, usually, that's, that's a common thing. But, sabi nga, Try to pick up which will be useful for you. And you can throw those things which are irrelevant. Again, for learning environment is to promote institutionalization. Yan. So, kagawa kayo ng programs, projects, and activities. Sasabihin mo doon to institutionalize uh, a God Center which will cater to students who are being abused yan. or to institutionalize uh, a system for uh, for online bullying so these are institutionalization and when we say we institutionalize we establish a system we establish a policy wherein all the stakeholders are informed and we will be going back to the planning that pinagplanuhan, pinag-usapan, lahat tayo, aalis, sama-sama tayo, pupunta tayo doon. And that is institutionalization. Alam ng lahat, lahat ay informed, lahat ay uh, may alam. Kalimitan nga, pag, pag mga ganyan, mga institutionalization of policies, may mga pirmahan pa yan, di ba? Yung child protection policy that is uh, being institutionalized. So, tawagin si kapitan, Ko kaya yung assign sa sa barangay sa uh, barangay child protection committee chairman so si school head tapos yung uh, president ng faculty club president ng mga students and, th and they will sign and that is institutionalizing okay di ba isan marami tayong mga ginagawa as teachers as school heads but the problem with us is we we, we forgot to to document we we forgot to 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 write these things, diba? So, let's say, on, on a uh, school case, diba? Yung estudyante ay kinlaim na siya ay kinurot ni teacher. Kinurot sa tainga. O, yan. Diba? So, sasabihin ni estudyante, pag-uwi, nanay, kinurot ako ni, ni teacher. Yan. May sugat sa tainga. Diba? Pero kung kung ikaw si teacher at you are you are observant to, to your students and nakita mo na ba ah, may 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 sugat ka pala sa tenga, di ba? Tiningnan mo ah may sugat ka pala. Ay dadaling kita sa clinic. So pagdating sa clinic, ang gagawin ni nurse, gagamutin yung sugat tapos ililista. Oh, kailan nangyari to? Napaano 'yan? Oh, yung pala naman may nakaaway pala na nakaklase. Eh, binubuli siya noon, takot siya doon, nang isinumbong si teacher kasi hinawakan daw ni teacher, nagkasugat siya. Pero kung merong clinic write-up na ito, si gantong estudyante, ginamot ng ganitong oras, uh, nagkasugat, nilagyan ng beta betadine, blah, blah, blah. So, you are safe because it's recorded. At the same time, so kung meron kang, uh, this is again on, on the context of a face-to-face -face class. Meron kang uh, write-ups, meron kang uh, report na nakita mo na ganito si estudyante, you will be saved. Diba? 
So, come any fact-finding investigation or any reklamo, kahit tumawag pa yan kay Tulpo, kahit sino pa ang tawagin yan, if, if you have the right up and you have the evidence to support your cases, then you are safe. So, mahalaga po yan. So, even for, for students who are, who are not submitting the the modules or you can you can observe that uh, his he or her or his or he her answer on the modules are i think this one is very disturbing then you you can uh, you can look for processing or activities to help the students okay so number 5 is capacity building activities in dealing with CICL or children in conflict with the law and children at risk. So kalimitan pag pag mga ganitong cases ay inire-refer natin to sa DSWD. Okay, but uh, the school as an institution should should refer this to to proper authorities. Okay. And if reported to us, we will be committing a sin of omission, di ba? Di ba? Dalawang, dalawang klase daw yung kasalanan. Isang commission at isang omission. So, if we do it intently, okay, we kill a person, we hit him, we punch him, that is physically harming a person, that is sin of commission. Pero nakita mo na yung, yung matanda, ina, sinisipa, ginaganyan, at least you do something. And when you do something, to, to protect that women, you will not commit the sin of omission kasi hindi mo pinabayaan. Ginawa mo on your own capacity to help or at least call for help. Okay? Next. Strengthen and sustain the capacity of administrators, guidance counselors, and teachers in handling cases of violence, abuse, exploitation, and bullying, and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, ang uh, pinakang ano po natin dito, uh, nabanggit ko na, is to to make the necessary report and cases of bullying or instances uh, physical harm to students or to to teachers dapat mer meron lagi tayong incident report. Okay? So, cases of bullying naman, uh, meron tayong tinatawag na intake sheet. Okay? And the intake sheet should be immediately brought to the proper authority. So, in our case, uh, dapat mapadala siya sa legal unit ng uh, DepEd Quezon. Ngayon, maganda. Kasi you can you can submit reports immediately to to the gumaka sub-office. Yan, nakita ko si Ma'am Judith nung minsan dyan nag- Nagbisita siya sa gumaka sub office. Okay? So, laging ganon. May intake sheet agad, reported. O, ito yung nangyari. Ito yung details. Yan. So, bago magreklamo sa DepEd, sa division office, well, this case is already reported. Okay? And we will be doing actions. Di ba? E, pa, paano kung kay Tulpo pa tumawag? E, tatawagan yung ano, yung yung principal oh. so anong isasagot mo sabihin mo ay hindi ko kasi na report yan ay busy kasi ako ang dami ko kasi work wow or oy yung guidance counselor kasi namin work from home during that time oh di ba yung, yung mga ganun ay reported naman na, na na merong online bullying na nangyayari sa klase so this this thing should be should be reported to what we call an intake sheet and if this is reported you are safe Sabi mo, ah, ah, reported na po yan. It's, uh, it's being dealt with the proper authority. So, take note po, ah, hindi, hindi lang tayo dahil uh, modular, eh, walang nangyayaring mga instances of bullying and gender biases activities. So, this one is for learning resources and I will not discuss this in de detail because, uh, this will take so much time, but I will just focus on the learning resources as it should be gender responsive, okay? It should be uh, teachers, uh, writers, evaluators, layout artists, and even publishing companies should be aware of the content. And of course, we should check on this, diba? And this is uh, also related to God learning resources and learning procured from external sources. So, the gist of, of this uh, 
okay this this uh, numbered items is focusing on how we will evaluate the, the materials being used for our students kaya malimit maririnig niyo sa akin his her yan because i i'm not gender ba uh, i'm not gender biased okay his her okay so mga 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 ganung items na minsan nakikita natin sa sa mga sa mga textbook na well I, I can sense that that this book is gender bias okay try try to look for for materials di ba parang ano ba mat mat problem kaya itong itong writer na to kalimitan ang ang mga mga exam ang pangalan ng mga ano niya ng mga character dun sa problem solving is usually male siguro ano to uh, bias di ba parang ganon so I, I'm not telling that it is not it is not advice but uh, you you can feel that one okay so mamaya meron pang mga ibang ibang uh, discussion on that ayan so let's say that that you have produced a localized material so when when you have produced a localized material you can ask the school head to to endorse that to the learning resource center of the division for for quality assurance So so that you you can say that uh, well this material uh, passed the the validation as per quality and as per god requirements. So that's very important. Yan. So yun, gather and upload quality assured god learners and teachers resources. So di ba meron naman tayong mga support uh, video presentation sa sa mga students natin. Bago nyo, bago nyo i-download, bago nyo i-send sa student, please watch the whole video. Take note of that. Please watch the whole video and try to try to critic if it is if there are gender biases, di ba? If uh, if not gender biases, there might be sexual context, okay? Na na not not fitted for for the age of our students, di ba? So baka makapag-send kayo ng video na na ba pa teka puro hali ka na to. This is not proper. I I I will look for another. Okay? So di ba minsan pati yung mga kahit yung mga ads, even ads nowadays are are, are not fitting, di ba? And proper. So try to to analyze. Ba teka, ang ang ads pa lang naka-assign dito ganito. So maybe I I may not use this one. And next, so field offices should also use uh, contextualization, localization, indigenous learning resources for our materials. Okay, uh, we have uh, talked about the materials, about uh, how to, to deliver it properly, and the, and the context of teaching and learning. The next one is assessment. Okay. So always ensure that there is formative and summative assessment on the school level, okay? And that it should be gender responsive, culture sensitive for all learners, teachers, and other concerned personnel. Okay? So yung mga mga assessment natin, so hindi hindi siya hindi siya dapat siya gender responsive. Okay? So di ba ganto? Ah, kalimitan pag uh, pag tayo ay uh, sa, sa industrial arts, diba? industrial arts. Because I I used you know I I used to to teach sa sa ano sa Manuel S. Inberga Memorial School of Arts and Trades, and that is a tech book school. We are teaching automotive, uh, welding and fabrication, uh, all all those industrial arts subjects, uh, building construction. Yan, building construction, malimit yan. So, formative and summative assessment or uh, yung mga authentic assessment which is yung mga practical aspects. So, building construction. Makikita mo yung yung mga babae, sila lang yung taga-sukat, taga ano, uh, pagli-layout. Why, why not uh, after that, give also, ask them also to, to do the the things which the, the male counterpart is also doing because It should be there should be equality there should be equity diba? kaya nga pagdating dito sa mga ano sa mga sa mga action researches pagdating sa mga mga interventions 
kalimitan, what I am asking is, so you have um, conducted the intervention. So you have finished uh, conducting the intervention for this group of students. So after your action research, how about the other group? Sabihin ng misa ng researcher or ng teacher researcher, ay okay na po kasi uh, we have the result. So no, even it's not part of your research, you also give the intervention so that they will also experience that intervention so that there will be equality, so that there will be equity in your class. Yan. Diba? And, and, and that is on, on, a, on a classroom basis. What if you are doing community work? Okay, so... Of course, given that the time, the resources, if, if you can do, that that is better. That's better. Alam naman natin, sinasabi nga na merong planning. And on the planning part, if you try to to look on that aspect, di ba? It's, kasi it's philosophical din eh. It's, uh, di ba, sinasabi natin na, na planning is philosophical. It's based on our rationality. Okay. Next, include God core messages and key concepts in the test development processes. And that it should be gen use gender fair language. Okay. So, so when you say uh, it's a gender fair language, it's it means that uh, uh, it should pertain to, to a man, to a woman, and that it is particularly general in nature. Number three is conduct God orientation for test item writers to ensure educational assessment. Ayan. So even for, for test items, there should be a, an orientation. Okay. And then uh, sa public and private accrediting institutions to include gender equality elements in the accreditation criteria. So kalimita naman ang mga accreditation na ginagawa naman sa mga schools. Eh, for example, you will be accredited for for a new course offering sa senior high school, di ba? Oh, may CR ba? Yung CR ba mayroong magkahiwalay na male and female, okay? That is for for gender equality. Oh, ito ito bang mga mga upuan, okay? Uh, tama ba yung height? Yan. So, ito bang mga cabinet is it accessible to all? Yan. Tama ba yung height? based on uh, the manual of operation for facilities. Yan. Meron kasing DepEd Facilities Manual of 2010. So, kung gusto nyo pag-aralan yun, uh, you can download the manual of operations for facilities management by DepEd. It's, uh, the year is 2010. So, that's it for, for assessment. And uh, we will proceed now to school health. So we we all know that uh, this is of course the the core priority and as I have also uh, mentioned in our previous discussion on the previous topic on the part of development that uh, everyone should have equal access there should be equality in terms of health services diba kasi sa sinasabi kasi sa human capital theory na the the basic uh, needs for human capital is health and education. Kaya malaki dapat ang budget for education and for health. Yan. So yan, mga nutrition program. Yan. So for, for even teaching and non-teaching personnel, they should be capacitated for, for this health and nutrition program. Okay. And at least uh, this uh, personnel should be, should be taught on how to to do the health service delivery okay papaano ang gagawin pag mayroong ganitong emergency papaano mag uh, magliligtas o papaano bubuhatin yung isang uh, female student in terms sa uh, she collapsed oh, di ba may, may mga may mga training yan okay ito uh, very very basic uh, many many schools are are not doing this Yung ano, yung uh, uh, survival kit bag sa, sa, sa mga offices ba ninyo, sa faculty room ba ninyo, meron bang bag na may laman na one half gallon na clean water and 
drinking water na merong merong can can goods that that can support you for for at least a week na merong medicine kit sa mga offices kam na lumindol ngayon na matabunan kayo Mer, meron meron ba kayo niyan oh, that, that is for for emergency oh, di ba so Laging dinidiscuss, Disa- school disaster risk reduction management. Oh, okay. Naka, naka-fix yung mga cabinet. Pag, pag lumindol, safe. E natabunan ka. Wala ka naman palang, uh, wala ka naman palang survival kit. Wala, wala ka nung, nung sinabi ko. ba? Diba? So, next. Uh, ensure that schools, learning centers, and workplaces promote mental health and psychosocial support. services we all we 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 in deped really need this one not just for us uh, for for parents for for students and uh, the tip that i can give you is to practice empathy to practice empathy to to consider the situation of our students to consider the situation of the parents in this time of pandemic that sometimes uh, we should be considerate and that uh, we are all in this difficult situation na minsan uh, ba't hindi nakasubmit tapos ganto bla 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 uh, napagalita na okay and lagi na lang ganyan ganyan pa ulit ulit but come to think may mga estudyante tayo na minsan meron silang internet connection meron silang gadget pero hindi sila marunong gumamit. O, diba? uh, and I have, I have conducted uh, interviews with, with parents, with students, na kaya pala, yung studyante ay hindi nakakapagsagot ng module, although may internet connection, may cellphone, ang alam lang mag-ML, saka mag-TikTok. Pero, hindi marunong mag-search. Pero, hindi marunong mag-download ng journals. Pero, hindi marunong mag-search sa mga scholarly articles. O, diba? Diba? na hindi marunong mag-install ng mga apps na na pinapagamit natin na hindi marunong mag-ed modo na hindi marunong mag-google classroom kaya nahihirapan siya hindi nakakapagsagot at hindi nakakasabay o ba diba? it is for for those students with uh, with internet connection with gadgets with computer imagine o paano pa yung mga wala and it's we all know the difficulties that they are suffering So, that's it. Just a sharing and, uh, you know, we should always have this this heart for our students, for our community. Next, ito, focus group discussion. Ano bang ginagawa pag, uh, pag focus group discussion? From from the word uh, focus, there will be one to two question and that you will be focusing on on these questions to, to a certain group of people. Yan. Uh, dati, nung nauso yung... Uh, yung mga gwardiya na nagreklamo at nagalit dun sa kanyang boss kasi inaabuso siya I, I immediately conducted a focus group discussion for security guards in our school Teka, usap muna tayo ano ba ang mga, mga na-encounter niyong problema ano ba ang mga challenges to, to take immediate action baka malay nyo, hindi mo alam bariling ka na lang, di ba? Yeah, yeah, mga ganyan. And you should be aware of those things. O sa mga sa mga parents, bigay lang tayo ng bigay. What if one time we 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 talk to these parents, uh, of, of course of, observing safety and health protocol. Ah uh, mga nanay, pwede bang maiwan muna at least sa uh, you know in a focus group da- discussion at least uh, five five to to seven participants will do. So kasi pag isa lang dialogue lang 'yon. So So, ano po ang mga mga problema na nai-encounter na nakikita ninyo and blah blah blah. And usually you can you can do follow-up questions and you can do a qualitative research based on on what you are doing, di ba? Next, information, education and communication materials, okay? So, in terms of God, in terms of uh, protecting their rights, in terms of their sexuality 
Minsan, sangatan natin ng oh, uh, women's month ngayon, oh, children's month. Oh, ito, uh, isangat doon sa module, oh, ito yung mga karapatan ng mga bata, okay? Oh, ito yung mga emergency number na pwede nyong tawagan. That is helping them. Next, sa youth formation naman, uh, youth formation is usually uh, uh, conducted on, on the school level. Kasi di ba meron tayong youth formation coordinator. And again, it is related to gender rights-based education. Okay? Which is, of course, in coordination with the National Youth Commission. Okay? And uh, because, again, we are... Um, having this uh, modular distance learning and uh, we can experience now uh, talking with uh, the students on a face-to-face -face, uh, scenario so siguro pwedeng, pwedeng online and uh, do activities well I think uh, you have uh, elected uh, officers for for students so you can you can create activities for for them for for their development leadership training and gender sensitivity training for 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 our students as well so lahat pwede 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 rin yang i-integrate so remember that that god is uh, not just for teachers and personnel it 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 can be integrated and it is part of youth formation yan so uh, sana sa school nyo merong guidance counselor or at least a guidance teacher to, to help the students okay because uh, these people are, are trained to to assess to, to evaluate okay gender problems or cases that may arise and may be experienced by uh, students ito na school sports oh alam na alam natin ngayon uh, very famous si Heidelin Diaz who won the first gold medal for for the for the Philippines imagine uh the first uh, gold medalist, the first Olympic gold medalist is a woman. And take note, it's weightlifting. Diba? So, sports development aligned with Republic Act 9710, which is women in sports. So, siguro kung, kung sa school, uh, nagawa kayo ng taekwondo team. So, kung merong male, merong female counterpart. Yan. So, sa basketball, kung kaya, kung merong male, merong female. Di ba may, may ano na ngayon? May, 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 fem may male and female. Volleyball, yan. To, to at least strike a balance between gender. And of course, capacity building for sports development. I think uh, Ma'am Mayat Punilia already conducted the training for, for sports uh, sa Sibilias. And parang it's a week-long training for for teachers, for MAPE teachers specifically, and for coaches and officials. Okay. Ayan, gender responsive implementation of sports programs and activities. I, you know, I, I, I was once a taekwondo coach. So, and uh, unofficial also. So, pag ako yung tournament manager, uh, of course, I will make sure na pag uh, ang nasa inspection ay lalaki, ang i-inspect niya na player ng taekwondo is lalaki din. Okay, yung lalaki ha. Iyan. Pag pagbabae, ang inspection, nag-inspect, ang inspect niya ay women players. So that that is uh, of course to, to to make sure that our students are safe and that again, they they feel safe and they feel comfortable while doing the sports that they love. Okay? So let's proceed to to planning, okay? Which is again part of uh, this PPAs, programs, projects, and activities. So gather and analyze sex disaggregated data and gender information for informed dec decision making. So if you have this is school management information system in your school, or at least you have a Google Drive to to gather data. So. You can see the the data for for sex disaggregated data. Oh, ilan ang ilan ang grade seven natin ngayon, ba? Mas marami pa lang ngayon ang grade seven na babae. Oh, dito sa sa, sa grade eight natin, ba? Mas marami pa lang lalaki, di ba? Parang you you look on 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 that disaggregated data and you can base your planning based on the data that you have gathered. Oh, ngayon pala dito sa sa grade seven, mas mas marami pala ang 
ang mga lalaki. So, siguro, i-distribute na rin natin siya sa, sa mga classes equally na mas marami din yung lalaki tapos kaka-unti din yung babae. Hindi yung, ako, naipo na dun sa isang klase yung puro, puro lalaki tapos puro babae. That's, that's uh, to ensure that uh, you have used the data properly and you have used the data for, for planning and for school actions which are, of course, practicing equality. Next is monitor the implementation of the basic education research agenda, specifically its God component. So, yung, yung basic education research agenda, uh, marami, marami siyang mga, mga topic. And kasama sa team, yung God component. You can do a research focusing on God and its implementation. Yan. So, hindi lang, hindi lang teaching and learning, hindi lang sa school management, hindi lang sa school operation. So, pwede din yung God component. And of course, ensure that policies and studies being reviewed are aligned with this policy. So, let's, uh, I don't know if you will be doing this or at least you, 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 can, you can at least uh, reflect on what I have discussed. Okay? God plan in the school level. With the discussion and the meaning of planning, God for development, specifically human development, and various PPAs for God, craft a God plan for your school. So, paano ba gawin yan? Okay, I, I have a template this. This is uh, the basic template. So, for, for the introduction, you can, you can write an intro. Sometimes, you can, you can put the rationale. Yan. And then, the general objectives, the, uh, the God plan matrix, which is focusing on areas of concern, uh, the programs, projects, and activities that you would like to include. Uh, would you like to include this in your instruction? Oh, on the checking of materials which are being used by the students yan for for planning for assessment yan tapos uh, you can put specific objectives and then strategies yan so sports yan pwede pwede nyo ring ilagay so strategies time frame budgets ba, budget and source human resources material resources success indicators and risk and then at, at the last part uh, you can do your your evaluation or your planned evaluation for for the specific activity so usually naman pag pag evaluation hindi ginagamit na at the end of the, of the activity uh, this uh, uh, parameters will be used to to evaluate the said activity and then prepared and of course approved i i know uh, um, the the school head will be will be very keen on on uh, doing uh, when you present a God plan, the school level, and uh, it is good that uh, you have uh, your school God coordinator, and uh, of course he or she should work with with a team. Okay. So let me share this to you. If if you would like to know more about me, and you would like to to learn things about DepEd uh, policies. And other things related to to our work, you can you can visit this blog, Aris Barago Blogs. You can click subscribe, and then you can also find the the Facebook page that that I am maintaining, and uh, you can click uh, the the playlist. Yeah, and you can you can subscribe, and uh, for those also aspiring principals, you can also visit the uh, review materials which I have done a service to the people and as my. Uh, my intent of helping uh, aspiring principals para dumami po ang mga uh, kagaya natin na handang maglingkod at tumulong sa bayan para sa mga estudyante. Yan. I have also food and travel blogs if you would like to see. Okay. So, ito po yan. yan. So, yun sa principals test. Uh, pinakita ko lang yung mga, mga blogs. So thank you so much uh, and uh, I, I hope that, that you got something from, from my talk and at least you, you saw how, how to, to do the planning and how to put it on the, the concept of uh, development as per human development and uh, as guided by the, the, the debit order which I have discussed. You can apply this and uh, 
of course, be guided on your work. So thank you so much. God bless. And I hope to, to see you face to face.